And by worship, what do we mean? What is this? Yeah. To obsess over it. To obsess over it, yeah. And the, the essence of, of religion is to obsess over it to the point that it becomes submission. So in other words, what do you, uh, if you're doing what God wants you to do, then you're doing something that's not necessarily what you want to do. And if we're, if we're thoughtful about it, and we, we do have a religion, and we're thoughtful about it, what we would hope for is that our will comes into alignment with the will of the, of the Creator. If, we have a, if our religion is not quite that, if we're like, oh yeah, this Creator's pretty cool, I know He wants me to do all these things, but that's not really my thing. Well, then you're not really a follower of that, of that religion. You're, you're a critic of it, sure, but you're not a follower of it. The, the essence of religion is to, is to submit to that one religion. And, and Catholicism is to submit, of course, to, to Jesus, but it's also to submit to the authority of the church that's, that's underneath it, uh, the Catholic Church. If you're a Protestant, maybe you don't have uh, a central church like the Catholic Church to, to submit to, but you're submitting to, to, to certain um, ideologies, certain theologies. Um, if you're a Muslim, I mean, the, the, the whole idea behind Islam is, to, is submission, surrender, surrendering themselves to, to God. So if that's the case, then you better be darn certain that the thing that you're surrendering to is something that's worth surrendering to. And this is no different, by the way, if you're going to obsess over anything in life. If you're going to obsess over, let's say that, um, let's say that you're a musician, and if you're going to obsess over music, well, you know, whatever it is that you're going to install in your life, you better make sure that it's something that makes all the suffering of life worthwhile. It better be something that helps you to transcend all of the negativity of it so that you can find something in life that makes it all worth doing. If you're going to follow something in life, a leader, well, my goodness, you're going to have to, to submit certain aspects of yourself, and you're going to have to lose certain parts of yourself to follow that person. And the same is true with regards to a religion. If you're going to submit yourself to God, you're going to have to give up all of, a lot of the, the stuff that we, we think of as being fun. But it isn't necessarily fun. Um, it very well might be fun, and then as soon as, you, as soon as you no longer like it because you're following your religion, your idea of fun is going to change. You know, it's like if anybody in here um, is really into exercising, if you, go, if you run a lot, um, is anybody in here excited about the idea of a, of a long-distance run? Yeah, exactly. But if anybody in here was a, was a runner, cross-country runner, you might be like, oh yeah, that sounds like fun. Because all of a sudden your lifestyle starts to change and, you be, and, you, and your, your lifestyle comes into alignment with the lifestyle of a, of a, of a runner. Um, if you're a dancer, your lifestyle goes into focus and you, and you start to live the lifestyle of a, of a dancer. And that means that you forsake certain things to, in order to maximize yourself as that follower of that thing dancing or religion or running or whatever it is. And so the same is true here, that if we're, it's, it's going to be a God in a, in a sense, but understand that that means that there's going to have to be some level of submission to that, which means you're going to have to give in to it. That's where all, a lot of this stuff comes in. Maybe their personal characteristics, if we're looking at them objectively from the outside, they're not all of what we imagine them to be. Perhaps you know, they're not quite the priority. Perhaps, you know, we don't, uh, maybe we're giving them more grace than, than they deserve. Although, I imagine we all get more grace than we deserve. And so the point of it is that the person themselves is not that thing. Um, if you think of a person as, oh, they're so smart, they're so this, it's probably you lifting them up onto a pedestal. It's not them necessarily claiming to be that thing. Now, they very well might be pretending to be that thing. That's pretty common as well. But more than anything, it's probably a matter of, of, um, of you putting them up there. And so it's essentially you envisioning something onto a person. And when they fail to meet those things, perhaps the problem is, is with you. Yeah. And again, it's true. We can think of this in terms of, um, oh my goodness, anything in life that you're going to follow. Um, a career path, we have an idea like, oh, I have a dream job. Okay, well, the dream job, as Rose says, the dream job a lot of times is exactly that. It's just a dream. But then we imagine what it's going to be like. And then it's not that thing. Maybe we attain it, and then we're thinking, my goodness, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. Well, it's true. You couldn't have known what it was going to be until you experienced it, until you encountered it. Um, you can't know what anything's going to be like until you experience it, until you encounter it. And a person is like this as well. It's one of those tragedies, actually, I suppose. You can get into a, 
uh, a relationship with someone for 10 years, and again, it doesn't have to just be romantic, it can be a friendship as well. And it may take you 10 years to discover who a person really is. And you might think, well, that's a waste of 10 years. Not necessarily, though. If you learn from it, you grew from it, you got something out of it, perhaps, it's positive. But um, understand that when we do that, though, we're, we're creating that thing. And isn't that the thing is great in and of itself? It's because you have the ability to see it as such. And there's a, an, an intense power that's in that, by the way. Because then you can see something. I mean, if you can make a god out of a human, I mean, and I mean, gosh, there, most humans are, are very much closer to the devil than we are to God. Then imagine what else you could make beautiful in life. There's a lot of things that you can make much better in life simply by your determination to see them or to see things in a certain way. Maybe to see more positives in life than negative. Maybe to see how people interact with you. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms?